Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, today is the update. Today is the 19th, and the update actually happened. It's about 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, I saw that they announced it, so I jumped on IL2 and went to download it, and here we are. So some of the highlights of this new update, uh, there's about 80 things included in the update from what they're saying. Uh, first of all, two new collector's planes are released, the Yak-9 and Yak-9T. Um, I don't have those, so I really can't comment on those, but you can buy them. Uh, they mentioned for tank crew, they've added a bunch of stuff. Uh, the self-propelled heavy howitzer, the SU-152. Also, the ML-20S. And... Three campaigns, three scripted campaigns are included. Kaiser Schlott, Spring Offensive, and Lightning Strikes. Now, this is the good news that we've been waiting for. So let's go over to Scripted Campaign. There they are. So these are the two campaigns, Kaiser Schlott and Spring Offensive are for the uh, Flying Circus Volume 1 planes and Lightning Strikes is a campaign that is free to owners of the P-38J Collector's Plane and Battle of Badenplatt. Um, the campaign was developed by our friend and talented mission maker Jägermeister, and it portrays the P-38 combat missions in the skies of Europe from October to the end of December 1944. The campaign includes an outstanding number of missions, 25 of them, the last of which tells about the notorious events of January 1st, 1945. The campaign is included free of charge to everyone who owns the P-38J-25 and Battle of Badenplatt. Uh, there is also an accompanying skin pack for this campaign and is available on the forum as well. That is fantastic news. Let's see, what else is there? There's so much stuff in here. It's, I'm, I'm kind of bouncing all over the place. So uh, there's a bunch of flight model and damage model tweaks. Uh, if you go over the, you know, the... The change log, it's the Yak-9, Yak-9T, the SU-152 heavy assault gun, LA-5 Series 8 exterior textures, including damage, are in 4K now. The LAF, or LA-5FN collector's plane now has 4K textures. The HE-111 H6 exterior textures, including damage, are in 4K now. HE-111-H16 as well has new 4k textures uh, the two campaigns we mentioned uh, the campaigns for flying circus those are free to people who own flying circus um, the graphics engine of the sim now uses deferred shading technology this is something we're going to look at here in a second but I'm just going to read off some of the other graphical improvements so FXAA or MSAA can be selected in the game options uh, there's a new option for cockpit reflections. Let's take a look at settings then. Graphics. I have 4K textures. Where is the setting? I'm not seeing that one. It says that there's a new option, cockpit reflections. Am I missing it? Shadow quality, screen resolution. Um, not seeing one that says canopy reflections. Is that it? Let's go high. It says on the notes here that there's a new option and it says cockpit reflections. I know I'm not blind and I'm not seeing it as an option here. FXAA or MSAA. Now, everything else in my options here are what they were set at before. So I haven't changed anything, and this is where I had it sitting before this update. 
Yeah, I don't see that cockpit reflections option here in the settings. I'm going to hit accept because I think I only changed one thing. I turned on canopy reflections. Yes. Do I have to restart the game? Really? Fine. As we're loading, it also says metallic and lacquered aircraft surfaces reflect the light softer and more naturally. Uh, there are canopy and instrument reflections in the cockpit. Uh, the aircraft visual image won't suddenly darken when zooming out at a distance. Damage textures won't light up too much when zooming out at a distance. Rivers and lakes, water visuals are improved. Cloud reflections and water bodies improved. Excessive brightness of high detail buildings in the Prokovolka map has been reduced. And shell casings won't become transparent when too close to the camera. That does look nice. I'm over here trying to look at the cockpit while I'm flying. Performance wise, it's the same though. That's the one thing I'm noticing. I'm still around 144 FPS. So that's the best part. And then just looking around, I guess you got to hit the light just right. So, yeah, I think the cockpits look nicer in terms of the reflections and whatnot in there. So, externally, I think it looks nice. I think it looks a little shinier, maybe. I don't know that it looks monumentally better. I guess the lighting is hitting it a little better than what I remember. It's really hard without being able to side-by-side -side it, you know? So the only thing that I noticed that sucks in IL-2 is when I go paused, I can't move my head around the cockpit with my track IR like I can in DCS because they have an active pause. But by looking at this, I would have to say they definitely improved the lighting uh, in the cockpit. It definitely looks better and it's getting a lot closer to how it looks in DCS. Yeah, especially with that, those reflections and the lighting in the cockpit right now. It's coming around, man, for sure. It's definitely better. There we go. Going down. So in addition, there's new pilot models on the on all Soviet fighters and on the A-20. Uh, the new pilot model has three uniform variations. New pilot model has a sidearm. Battle of Baden plant aircraft, which have been also lend-leased to the USSR, can have Soviet crews if their country in a mission file is set to USSR. P-40, Spitfire, and other Spitfire have American pilots if their country is on a mission file set for the USA. And another one has, it says they can have British pilots if their country in a mission file is set to the UK. Uh, in addition, there's a ton of other things. Player controllable tanks, quish, quick missions for tanks, tank duel and tank skirmish, new ones. Uh, all player controllable tanks have transmission from forward, backward, and left, right user controls to simulated tank controls corrected, which improve their turnability at high speeds and reduce tendency to enter a skid. Uh, I really need to get in there and look at these tanks. Uh, I've been meaning to do that for a while since I have that product. Uh, commanders of the indirect fire capable, capable self-propelled guns can order the AI gunners of their tank or tank platoon to set fire at a distance and direction. 
T34, blah, 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 got two new modifications, additional all-steel internally sprung, sprung wheels, SU-122 SU OF-462 HE shell ballistics corrected. Um, just tons of stuff for the tanks in here. I'm not going to read them all. Uh, aircraft physics systems and visuals, max airspeed at which the pilot is able to bail out now depends on the vertical G-load acting on the pilot. Uh, G-load indicator is added to the HUD when simplified instruments are switched off. Uh, a message about turret ammo replenishing and turret repair has been added. Um, just so much. There's 80 things on this list. And like I said, I'm not going to go through here and read every single one of them. But one of the things that stand out is uh, all flying circus airplanes hitting at central section of the top wing now also leads to breaking the top wing. It's left or right part. The geometry of wing spars on all flying circus airplanes have been checked and brought into strict compliance with known sources. In general, now it requires much more bullet hits to break the wings of World War I aircraft. Pretty cool. And ground and naval units. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. AI aircraft. Actually, it goes all the way up to 87 things that have been included in this. That's a ton. So this 4.006 update is pretty massive. Let's jump in another plane. Let's go into the quick mission. And let's take one of these guys again. Let's take a camel. And we're going to pick Eris Spring 1918. Oh, it changed everything. Camel. And we'll go against an albatross. So the one thing I'm noticing right away, and I noticed this earlier too, is my performance really isn't hurting that much from this. Got a couple shots in on them. I'm terrible with these World War One aircraft. Whoa. I think outside of VR, they're a little more difficult for me. Is he going in or what? He's upside down. Whoa. Man, that's crazy. Dude was upside down. Oh, he went in. Nice. So yeah, those reflections and the shadowing looks fantastic. Definitely better than it was. And it really reminds me of what they got going on at DCS, especially right there. That looks fantastic. Very nicely done. I think things definitely look nicer with the new renderer. And the key thing here is that look at my FPS in the top corner. I, if anything, I turned on the canopy reflections. That wasn't turned on before, and I'm still sitting at a solid 143, 144 FPS in the top right corner. So that's fantastic. Yeah, the planes definitely look nicer. Jump back. Hey, look at that, another mission accomplished. Doesn't usually work out that well for me. You can almost see more of a more of a realistic shine of the light hitting the metal. Yeah, that looks really impressive. I think before everything looked a little, I want to say more matte finish, less, you know, more dull. Where this is starting to look more like DCS.
Yeah, it definitely looks better. With the proper lighting, everything looks better, though. Yeah, this is definitely shinier. Um, has a more realistic look to it because of how the, the light is hitting it now. This is the same texture I had in the video the other day. Let's turn to this side. Let's illuminate this side and see how it looks. Yep, definitely looks better. All right, in the P-51 we are. And as the light pans around into the cockpit, definitely looks a little bit nicer than what it did. Let's take a look at the water. They mentioned they did something to the water. So, does the water look better? Hmm. You know, I didn't think the water looked bad before, but I really can't say that the water is monumentally def different. Eh, it looks cool. It doesn't look bad by any means. And again, the plane looks fantastic. Yeah, these guys are really getting closer to DCS quality with their uh, with their artwork. Yeah, that Mustang looks fantastic. They're definitely getting a lot better with their artwork. It looks fantastic. The planes definitely look better than what they did. And again, I think they moved away from that hand-drawn matte finish to what is looking to me more of a more naturally lit texture when the light hits it. You see how there's shine on the nose of it there as I'm turning it and it's following it. Or on the cockpit canopy even, that little bit of shine. I don't remember it looking that way before. To me, all the planes always looked hand-drawn in this, you know? They're definitely approaching more photorealism than they've ever been able to before. And again, DCS better watch out. This is one more step in the right direction for IL-2. So that about covers the update, at least from my end. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more to talk about. I'll throw a link to the changelog to give you an idea of what everything is that you can find in the update. But again, the highlights are the scripted campaigns, Kaiser Schlott Spring Offensive for owners of Flying Circus Volume 1. You've got two completely scripted campaigns now. Uh, if you own the P-38 in Battle of Vodenplatt, you've got the Lightning Strikes campaign, which I also just made a video of Mission 1 in the beginning of Mission 2 to show you what that's all about. And it's fantastic and super fun. And um, the new rendering engine is the other big addition, you know. Uh, outside of that, like I said, I, I read off some of the other, you know, details and improvements and fixes that you can expect to find in here. But I think the ones that stand out the most right now in 4.006 are the three scripted campaigns and the new graphics rendering engine that they're using. So very cool stuff. 
I hope you enjoyed as much as I am. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time, guys.